My name is Phoebe Sugden and I am currently studying Fashion Marketing at Leeds Beckett University. As a part of the first module, Foundation for Marketing, I have been asked to produce this 10 minute vlog where I'll be discussing firstly, what is marketing? Secondly, my assessment of marketing organisations and their orientations. And thirdly, the challenges contrasting marketing myths with reality. Finally, I will conclude with a reflection of the lessons I learned and my experience throughout carrying out research and videoing this vlog. What is marketing? A commonly known definition of marketing is written by the Chartered Institute of Marketing, which describes marketing as the management process responsible for identifying, anticipating and satisfying customer requirements profitably. This basically means that the business places the customer at the centre of all of its decisions and aims to fulfil their wants and needs in a way that also creates a large profit for the business. Marketing is an ongoing process. As the world changes, so do customers and therefore businesses must adapt and evolve to move with the times. Marketing does not end with market research or launching a product or service. Marketing must continue throughout each sector of the business. Marketing orientations. There are four different orientations that a business can adopt. Production, product, sales and marketing. Production oriented businesses are focused on cutting costs and maximising profits by producing high volumes of products with a low margin and selling them cheap. An example of a production oriented business within the fashion industry would be Primark as they mass produce clothing and sell them at the cheapest prices on the high street. Product oriented businesses are focused on developing the product or service that they already have. As there is high focus on the research and development of the product, businesses that adapt this type of orientation believe if they can make the best product or service, the customer will come to them. Although without research and clarification that the company is making a product that customers actually want or need, the business could fail. An example of a product oriented business would be Apple a company which relaunches its products such as the iPhone time and time again without any indication that this is what their customers want. Their recent launch of the iPhone 7 and all of the reviews stating problems with the new iPhone not having a headphone jack is a good example of how product oriented businesses can fail their customers. Sales oriented businesses focus on selling what they produce. This means the company focuses on making sales through marketing and sales calls. Businesses within the fashion industry that could be defined as sales oriented businesses would be companies such as Misguided, Boohoo and other online popular stores. These companies are sales oriented because they use advertisement and promotion to push sales. They use billboards, leaflets, adverts, social media, television and many more platforms to upsell their online products, which benefits the company by reaching a lot of potential customers. Finally, marketing oriented businesses focus on marketing a product tailored to customers' wants and needs. These types of business seek to identify customers' needs that aren't satisfied by rivals and provide solutions. These businesses usually become market leaders. Within the fashion industry, an example of a marketing oriented retailer could be ASOS. ASOS is an online store and marketplace that sells all kinds of products to fit all kinds of customers. They sell high-end brands for men and women such as Tommy Hilfiger and Ralph Lauren as well as more affordable brands such as Adidas and Nike. This way they can attract customers from each end of the scale and therefore increase sales. I am now going to discuss a variety of marketing myths and the reasons why I believe each myth is either true or false. The first myth I'm going to discuss is, a satisfied customer is a loyal customer. To an extent this could be true. For example, if a product is within your price range and does everything you need it to do and you are satisfied with every aspect, you could become a loyal customer to that brand. Although, you may not stay loyal to this brand, no matter how satisfied you are with the product, if your circumstances were to change. To justify my idea with an example I can use myself, 
As a young woman who loves clothes, I have always spent the majority of my money on new clothes or shoes. Although before I got a job at the age of 16, the only time I had money was my birthday, Christmas or any other special occasions. As the amount of money I had was limited, I shopped at the cheapest high street stores I could find, particularly Primark. In Primark, you can find a huge range of clothes from basics to statement pieces, all similar to more expensive high street retailers such as Topshop and River Island. I would say I was satisfied with the majority of the products I bought from Primark and therefore I could have become a loyal customer. But at the age of 16 when I got my first job and I had my own income, I could shop wherever I liked. Therefore I began shopping at stores such as H&M, Topshop and Miss Selfridge. This had no direct link to how satisfied I previously was with pro with Primark's products and customer service. It just so happened that I could now afford to shop in more expensive stores. Therefore, a satisfied customer is not always a loyal customer. The second myth I'm going to discuss is a strong brand is invincible. This is not true. No matter how strong a brand may be, there is no brand that is invincible. Alongside my lectures and seminars within this module, I was given this book to read. Customer Centric Marketing by Neil Richardson, John James and Neil Kelly. The second chapter of this book covers the topic, Why Do Companies Fail? There is a quote by Professor Richard Foster from Yale University that says, The average lifespan of a company listed in the Standard & Poor's 500 Index of Leading US Companies has decreased by more than 50 years in the last century. From 67 years in the 1920s to just 15 years today. An example of a strong brand within the fashion industry that was not invincible is British Home Stars. BHS was founded in 1928, primarily selling clothing and household items. The company expanded over the years and began selling furniture, electronics, groceries and beauty products in 164 stores spread out all over the UK, plus 74 international stores. According to a report on the Financial Director website, when BHS was placed into administration in June 2016, it was the biggest high street insolvency since Woolworths. Quotes taken from customers were as follows. It's not stylish enough. You can't go wrong, but you can't go right either. Another customer said, it's old-fashioned and out of date. These comments from customers prove that a strong brand does not necessarily mean that a business is invincible. If a brand does not keep up with trends and does not continue to grow and give their customers what they want, then the business will fail. Therefore, a strong brand is invincible is a myth. The third myth I am going to discuss is a big name brand can sustain a higher price. A big name brand cannot... Con a big name brand cannot necessarily sustain a higher price. The price a brand can sustain depends on how the brand is perceived by the market. An example of a big name brand that cannot sustain a higher price is McDonald's, which is a fast food company that opened its first restaurant in 1940. McDonald's is a massively, success a massively successful brand and there are over 36,000 restaurants in the world and the franchise employs of 420,000 people. As successful as McDonald's is, the brand would not be able to sustain a higher price as it is perceived by the market as a cheap fast food company. You can buy a burger from McDonald's for as little as 99 pence and a meal for around £4. And if the prices were to increase dramatically, you would find that customers would eat elsewhere. To conclude my vlog, I will discuss what I have learned in the first few weeks at university and throughout this module within Foundation for Marketing. I have learned how important marketing actually is for every business. Before my lectures and my research, I assumed that marketing was made up of promotions and advertisement and now I know that marketing is a responsibility for every single employee or sector of the business. I have also gained more in-depth knowledge about marketing orientations and which orientations are more useful for different types of businesses and which orientations make a business more successful. 
In terms of the marketing myths I have discussed within this vlog, my opinions have been altered throughout my research. As before, I would have thought that a big name brand could sustain a higher price due to being more successful, although, as I have learned, this is not always the case. I look forward to learning more in my upcoming lectures and seminars about foundational marketing. Thank you for watching my vlog.